Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Jim Afanis, and today I want to talk to you guys about the Halo World Championship Series. Now, if you guys are a Halo 5 nut like me, you know that CLG beat Alliance 4-0 in the World Championship Series game, which was played live on Twitch TV tonight. Uh, overall, the HCS was an amazing, amazing thing to witness. I've been really into the Halo competitive scene, not so much myself entering, although I do think I'm a lot better than I used to be, thanks largely in part to the Xbox One Elite controller. But uh, just overall, just the rise of esports, and you guys are no stranger to my channel. You know I've been talking about that for quite some time. So just to watch it and to enjoy it is really, really cool to see how it's basically broadcast and put together with all the commentators. So um, overall... North America crushed it. They were the lion's share of the teams. There were a few European teams that trickled in. One, I think there was four different European teams. Uh, only one made it to the quarterfinals, and then they were knocked out. So it's clear to me that the States definitely owns the first-person shooter scene, although I'm not really sure why um, it's so. they're so much better over here than anywhere else. But Whatever. Um, it was fun to watch, and it's cool to see that it is a global sport, even if the states dominated most of it, that the truth is anyone can pick up a controller and play. And that was mentioned tonight by Phil Spencer live at the finale, and I'll get to the actual finale in a minute. But leading up to the finale, uh, a lot of the com competition was really, really good. There were some really good matches that went deep into a third game in a best of five, and Momentum shifted, and the team that you thought was seconds from getting knocked out ends up turning around and winning everything. There were favorites that got knocked out very quickly. There were amazing, amazing plays that just totally shaped the whole dynamic of particular matches. So I was very pleased with what I saw. The coverage was really, really well done. A lot of the old Halo kind of veterans made their way around. Um, while she was there, he's one of the kind of, he's kind of the face of competitive gaming, at least in the first person shooter scene. I remember hearing that name back when I was a lot younger than I am now. <laughs> um, Bravo, who's the community manager for Halo, played a big part, and that was cool too as well. So a lot of participation from the Halo community regulars. In between the breaks on the shows, they are in between the matches rather, they had uh, Warcraft ads, which I knew Warcraft was one of the sponsors because we saw the commercial every time. But um, Mega Blocks was too. But it was cool to see some of the little packages they put together. They showed off the, the Sizzler reels or whatever from previous matches. They showed off um, just high videos about Halo and interviews with some of the other players. It was really cool to see that. You definitely got a sense that it was... There was some thought put into it um, leading up to that. Anyway, uh, leading up to the finale, it was a lot of that stuff. And then tonight, the finale comes on. So it was CLG versus Alliance. CLG swept for nothing. Congratulations to them. There was a lot of animosity between them and the team that I predicted to win, Evil Geniuses, because one of the players, Lethal, left and went to another team. But that turned out to be non-drama, and CLG crushed it. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that they are the best four-man squad right now in Halo 5. So unfortunately, the actual competition wasn't that great tonight because Allegiance just either didn't show up or CLG just crushed it. The production value is really good, but there's a few things that kind of bum me out that I was hoping for that I didn't see, and I'm hoping in the next iteration makes it even more of an exciting event. So uh, Blair Herder, formerly from pretty much every TV show you could ever imagine, the guy's just floating around, he was one of the hosts with Major Nelson tonight. And they did a quick introduction of the players, and they brought them out. There wasn't any real video package of them showing kind of the players going through their ranks. I guess if you're familiar with that, there's probably not a lot new in terms of what you don't already know in terms of who these players are. But then the commentators didn't seem to be on board with that. Uh, Golden Boy and um, Bravo were the two commentators, I believe. Uh, Sims and Walshy were just kind of hanging out. Um, because... 
they were explaining it as if like you had never seen the game before like oh well the point of strongholds is to capture two of the three points and you get a point every couple seconds so it was kind of like a disconnect and that seemed really weird to me so i think to put that kind of professional wrap around it i think showing a little vignette of each player or each team kind of showing how they got there would have been cool there wasn't really a lot of pre-game uh discussions and the action just you just kind of jumped into the action very quickly after the game was over and uh, CLG won on the fourth game. It was a sweep. It was over very, very quickly, very quick games. Uh, they brought all the players on stage. Blair Herder asked three super softball questions. Larry, uh, Major Nelson debuted the new Warzone uh, mode coming out, which I'll talk about in another video. And that was it. That was it. It fade to black and you're done. And I think, like, what they really missed out on was a lot more of that post-game coverage. You know, you have four of the like most some of the most revered players in Halo just sitting around, just like hanging out. And I think that Halo channel just sitting there gaining dust on it. And how cool would it have been if they put together like a post post game interview where they deep dive, kind of explain some more of the game in terms of like what play worked, what play didn't. You think of any football game, they always have like a wrap up at the end or like a sports center type thing. And I really feel like this would have uh, benefited from that to put more of a closure on it because it just ended so abruptly. And, you know, Halo being this is the, the you know, the, the whole prize pool being earned by requisition packs and being a two point five million dollar pot. Um, I think the winners got one million dollars, which split five ways. So they each got two hundred grand. It's still a lot of money. Um, you know, for really hyping up how much this event meant to the community and how much to the players. It just ended so suddenly and it's just like it's already over. Like, no one's talking about it anymore outside of me and a few other Halo faithfuls on Reddit or on the uh, Halo Waypoint channel. But it just would have been nice if there was just a little bit more to it. Um, and I'm not saying that necessarily just because it was a sweep. I'm saying just in general, I think it would have been more uh, of more closure, you know, more interviews with the losing team. You know, what did you guys do wrong? Interviews with the winning team. How do you feel? You know, and show off some of these things because I will say, I, I can't speak for all of them, but particularly last night during the semifinal match, Walshy was explaining in amazing detail what was happening to teams that were losing. And that kind of commentary, I mean, for a player, I love to hear that because it's going to make me better. But it's just very interesting. You know, there's no reason to just rush through it and get it's like, okay, hurry up. We know we got to get on. The uh, show's over next, next, next week. See you later. Bye. It, it would have just been nice to have a little bit more oomph to it, if that makes sense. So that's something that I hope maybe in the next iteration, which I believe is going to be in 2017, that they, you know, talk about. Um, one thing that they did do that I did like, though, was they put out a special rec pack for anybody who was watching, which includes uh, championship armor, championship helmet, and championship logo. And that's just a kind of neat souvenir for us to have virtually, kind of like we were there. Heroes of the Storm does this all the time with your player emblems, depending on if you're watching certain tournaments and you log in with an affiliated Twitch account. And I really do like that. I think that's a really cool, like, virtualized loot, you know, to make you feel like you were part of it. I mean, I would have loved nothing more to be there in person. Uh, one of the coolest eSport experiences I can say was when I got to go to the StarCraft Finals a couple of years ago, BlizzCon, and just to see how amazing that was and just watch these two players just battling it out for, you know, fame and glory. So, yes, I would have loved to be there in person, but I'm a biggest fan as everybody else out there. The only difference is I don't live in Hollywood, California. I live in Orlando. Um, so if the tournament was here, I would have been there, obviously. But because I wasn't, I just kind of have to watch. But that doesn't make me any less of a fan than anybody else. So it's really cool when they do this kind of stuff to really include the community. So I do appreciate that. And going back to my original point about that post-game summary, there was a lot of questions that I have. I was curious of the players that I guess I could probably reach out to them individually on Twitter. They may or may not see it. But I think in that community forum where they field a couple questions and maybe the commentators kind of get a sense of what you know players want to players like me want to know about the competition. I think that would have been a lot more fun. And there's no reason that this can't be more accessible. Um, but all in all, I know it sounds like I'm kind of critical on it because I think it can be better. I think it was great, but I think it can be better. And I'm a huge fan of Halo 5. I mean, this addiction of mine is now going 160 hours strong. I grinded through this weekend just to get 80,000 rec points so I can get a second pack after spending some cash money on the first one. Um, so 
clearly I'm the kind of guy that's going to enjoy the show and kind of be into it and, you know, really participate in it virtually or um, otherwise. You know, I'm voting on the polls. I'm watching the Twitch feed. I'm tweeting out things to my friends. I'm trying to get people interested in it. I'm going on the Halo Reddit. I'm going on the Halo Waypoint. I mean, I'm the guy that you want, right? I'm the guy that's going to go on the website and buy the stuff. I bought the lanyard because I wanted to have a kind of a souvenir of what had happened. So um, I just, you know, as a passionate fan, these are just things I'd like to see improved in the future. But all in all, it was really, really good. And I'm excited to see what the next wave of tournaments brings. I'm curious now that this tournament is over. Uh, I believe certain teams are going to be disbanded or at least reconfigured because I noticed some things. And if the amateur over here can notice a few things that are wrong with the teams, I'm sure the pros will definitely be able to uh, pick that apart as well. And that would have been something that's really, really cool as well to put out a, okay, what's next? So maybe in a few weeks, if anybody from Microsoft's watching this and they decide to put this channel together, Put it on Waypoint. Talk to us about where the teams are now, what they're practicing, what they can work on, what they can fix, that sort of thing. Because this isn't obviously going anywhere. This is a part of the Halo culture. And if clearly the fact that the MVP of the entire tournament was a guy, Nated, who didn't even win. He was on the losing team. Giving him the MVP was complete fanfare. And he's clearly one of the fan favorites. He does a lot on uh, Twitch and does a lot of streaming. Clearly, this isn't going away for us fans. We want more. We want to see more. We will clearly tune in. I think at one point the stream was north of like 75,000 viewers, which for Halo is un unheard of. <laughs> so give us more. I think you'll see a lot, people, a lot more people participating, and I think the sport overall will um, benefit from that. But all in all, congratulations again to CLG. Uh, allegiance man i don't know what to tell you guys you got to work on your some of your gameplay i guess i don't know i don't know what to tell you because i think you guys are all incredibly amazing and it was truly exciting to sit around and really make an event of this tonight with my wife and just sit around the tv and root for the teams and you know participate on the polls and that sort of thing that was really a lot of fun so i'm glad i got to see it from that perspective and i look forward to more halo stuff you guys can expect more halo coverage from me in the near future i think we're going to be getting another content drop soon and i'm trying to get a capture card set up so that i can show you guys some of my gameplay because there's some things that i've noticed that i want to share with the community and just kind of get involved in that scene a little bit more clearly i have the space for it now minus the echo 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 which will be fixed um <laughs> But anyways, that's all I have for now. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.